What up, players? Wobots tear up in this mud, and it is time to finish this. So, the first thing we're going to do in this step is forgot this little scrap of cloth here. So, we are going to paint that up, and we are going to paint that up in Mechrite Red, which is our red base color for any kinds of cloth that you definitely should have, especially if you have been following my. Um, how to paint skeletons tutorial. The reason we use this is because it's a good solid color. You only need a little bit of bad black to bring out all of the all of the uh, great qualities, I guess. It shades really well and then it highlights really well. The coverage, being a foundation paint, is phenomenal compared to just trying to paint this flat um, blood red on. Oh man, I'm really motivated today to get done. Really want to finish you up, Louis, because I got other stuff I need to be going on to. More projects, more minis. Okay, um, 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 um. that up. So <clears throat> the thing we're going to do now is I'm going to start individualizing some of these bodies giving them different effects that I know I want. So the guy that I want to burn have like he, he totally got charred and burned up is this body at the front for no other reason than because I got some chaos black paint on his forehead and I was like you know what that's already going there so it's already halfway there so I'm going to chaos black got my wet palette ready right here so I'm going to add some chaos black to it it's the same wet palette I've been using just been taking off the Kleenex refilling the water at the bottom and putting it back in I'm gonna get it nice and watery because we don't want it too thick for when we're painting on this uh, charred looking skin in detail. <clears throat> Let's find it good. There we go. And we just want to cover his fingers, his face, in this black wash. Uh, if you wanted to use Bada Black, I would suggest mixing in a little bit of Chaos Black into it just because Bada Black as is is really uh, not going to be thick enough. You'll notice that for the rest of these guys what I did was they, they might look a little darker than the last video and that's because I went back and I um, I painted one more layer of Ogren Flesh Wash to really bring out the, the shadows and um, I would suggest doing that. One more, one more application of Ogren Flesh Wash. I think that'll really help you out there. And I also applied a little bit more gore with red gore into the, the recesses and um, it, became, it came to the point where I was just kind of like making, making cuts uh, that, that didn't even exist. So looking back at our taking some more red gore, you can, if you just find some places that the wash really settled into, such as for example, here if you take a look at this guy with the really messed up opened chest and stomach cavity. He's got some wash that kind of accumulated right under his wrist on his forearm. So I say that's awesome. Let's make like it was just like torn open. So painting a line in there and then painting like a little rivulet of blood running down his forearm. So what I kind of want to make it look like these guys were the victims of some wasting disease that made their skin really pliable and uh, sensitive so that it was really easy to rip open and um, it really weakens your constitution and that's kind of what killed all these guys and makes it so easy for these rats to just burrow their way in. Um, also, I think it was Hippo, one of my subscribers and guys that I can always rely on to leave me some good, helpful feedback that said that um, he thinks the blood should be a little 
darker or brighter, one of those. And I say, you know what, you're absolutely right, whichever one you said. So I'm going to add more blood and make, make it darker in the dark areas and lighter in the light areas. So, uh, how's our charred guy? Oh, look at that, look at that guy. He looks like he totally got caught in a house fire and is just like, Bleh. yes, that is exactly what we want. And the great thing about that is he looks like he was actually charred versus just, you know, some dark Arabian skin fellow because the Chaos Black mixture uh, wash slash, I guess it's not, not really glaze, but the, the Chaos Black thin down that we added to him didn't turn his skin um, a natural shade, a naturally darker shade, but made it really look really charred and like it was just burnt completely so I'm gonna add a second application and this is good too because in a minute or in, in a little while when we're gonna add our uh, glowing green eyes it'll be one more cool thing to notice about him G green glowing eyes must are poking out okay so um, after the red gore, you want to add a little bit of blood red to some of these areas. And this is to um, just bring out some of the red areas, make them pop. Uh, so you want to pick and choose because the way I see it, the bodies on top are the most recent. They're the ones that just got thrown on, so they would be the most recent, the bloodiest. And the uh, guys on the bottom have been there rotting away at the bottom of the corpse pile for days, if not weeks. So, you want to show a little bit of blood splatter. And um, I also think that, like, blood running out of the, their mouths and um, eyes and ears and nose is also a great touch. I think it could almost be. Um, something that Nurgle gave to these people is just this this plague or this disease and if you do it not too much but just so that let's get a little focus just so that it looks like they were vomiting up blood and crying blood and having it dribble out of their noses and eyes then that should make it even grosser okay, I'm doing this guy up here now oh look at that look at you also he's definitely they should all definitely look fresh, which we're going to help by um, painting on some gloss varnish as well. Oh, I should have wet palletted that. This blood red has been a pain before and I don't expect it to be any less now. So you see how that bright, bright red really kicks up that color? Like Lewis just just now picked him off the the line. So any fresh fresh blood should look like that. But look at the difference between the fresh blood that's just pouring out of his body right there and the um, older scabbier rips coming showing out of his clothes. You uh, might want some of that contrast. I kind of like it. I'm not going to change it in any way. Um, but like I said. Look at the difference between, woo, look at all that. I'm gonna show you the difference between looking at the blood that's on these guys at the top of the pile, seeping out of their noses and their faces and their all their face holes and coming out of here. And the blood on, so take a look at the difference between the blood on this guy's running down this guy's leg and the blood down here which is dried and it's a little bit older. That's that red gore after being washed with Badav black and um, and and ogren flesh look. So I think there's definitely 
room for you to do both and have both. Yeah, I like these guys. Ah, oh, oh man, who sculpted this? Seriously, who sculpted this? This is only should be a shame. Somehow I'm gonna call their pastor. You need to get this guy into church. Yeah, I like the difference between that and the bright red and this dark red on this leg. Awesome. Next we're going to get on to uh, weathering. Alright, while waiting for uh, that last clip to load, I decided to take a little bit more artistic freedom with my uh, blood. And bloody this guy up even more! Oh, barbecue! Shish kebab! Alright, so next what we're gonna do is we're gonna paint our vials of viscous green liquid. We're gonna do Dark Angels Green with that. And uh, I'm talking about three vials on the back hanging off the ropes. So that's... That's my thinking now. I'm get my wet palette and put it next to me. Hanging off these ropes at the back right there. So, um, for those of you who uh, haven't been following my my uh, painting liquids, you just start at the bottom and have kind of like a level uh, level and direction and height that you don't want the, the liquid to get any further than. So I'm filling this one at like about three-fourths up and you just got to make sure that oh, you fill in the bottom too just in case somebody picks up the model and decides to look at it and then the one underneath I'm gonna fill a little bit higher. Oh! Someone's calling my phone! I don't know if you can hear it vibrating off of uh, over the the easy going, easy listening music, but I'm getting a phone call. Who is this? Oh, I'm busy. I'm painting my zombie cart. Okay, and we're gonna do the same thing on this side. This one, I'm gonna make it at its lowest level. Like this was the one. What do you have in here, Lewis? My hooch. This your bathtub gin? You know it. I gotta bring a little bottle of bubbly whenever I visit the ladies. <laughs> also going to paint in. Uh, I'm also deciding to, because I'm going to have their eyes glowing green, like they're glowing with otherworldly spooky ooky light, I'm going to paint green into the lantern as well. You'll see this in the Bale Fire upgrade if you take that. A lot of the Games Workshop art shows the Bale Fire painted up in this kind of ghostly green light. So I'm gonna be doing the same thing, but with this lantern, just painting inside all of the little squares. And don't worry if sometimes you paint out of the lines. It's, uh, it's okay. It's gonna be okay. It's my uh, <laughs> quick and dirty technique for uh, OSL or something source lighting. Okay, so we're gonna leave that for now. Uh, the next thing we're gonna do is we are going to start painting in the spooky eyes of the, the zombies. And if you've seen my Dire Wolves video, then you know that I use Scorpion Green for that. So we're gonna take a little bit of Scorpion Green water it down on our wet palette by putting it down, maybe adding a little bit of water. Wiping off the excess. So I should be showing you what I'm doing. 
I was just talking about it. There it is. Oh, doesn't that look lovely? So I'm taking it right out of the pot. Let me show it to you in real time. And uh, this is really bad paint. It looks like really thick. For some reason, it's drying out. I don't know why. Because GW paint pots are really terrible. And then I'm I'm putting it here on my little wet palette, dipping my brush in some water, and bringing it back in so that it spreads out nicely. And this is really doing a number on my on my bristles. So I'm gonna clean my brush thoroughly, wipe it off completely so that the paint hopefully didn't go all the way down to the bottom of the bristles inside the brush head. And now I'm just going to take a little bit of, of that green mixture and use that to paint with. And even that is too much because of the wet palette is going to make it spread uh, if you load up your brush with too much. So I'm going to be very careful. I'm going to start with this guy here on the lookout. where we think his eyeballs should be. You have this kind of sickly green light that we're gonna highlight in just a second. I got some on his nose. Okay, now we're gonna to get to work on the guys on the cart. have to worry about doing the glowing effect just yet. Just want to paint in their their eyeballs. If you do though, then that's fine. Show that witch fire burning inside their their eye sockets. So scorpion green is a really simple way of getting this light and that's because it's veering away from the, the green on the color wheel going more towards yellow if that makes any sense so it's actually bringing in another color that is nice and bright and uh, that's what causes it to pop I believe Another option that you could do, another thing that you could do instead of painting in green is uh, if you want you can actually paint the eyeballs in, which I, I think GW does that, it's their standard studio uh, paint job to have the corpses on the corpse card have, I'm going to give that guy only one, you can, can't see the eyeball over there. Um, that's up to you, I think this green glow is much more interesting uh, shows that the necromancer is controlling them all look at this guy I love this guy on the front Freddy Krueger look at all the blood popping out of him or his skin is just wasting away very nerdly. Okay, so now you want to take a look at your models and you want to clean up or add any green. And now is when, if you want, you can start painting in the glowing effect by painting in the eyebrow ridges and the top of the cheekbones. Those of you who've painted glowing eyeballs on your uh, Space Marines before, you've seen this technique used. So let's take a look at this guy here at the top, see if I can demonstrate it for you. Well, he's kind of all done because his eyes are in different places. Let's find the worthy candidate from, from the pile, shall we? Hmm. How's that guy? 
Okay, so I'll go look at him. So I'm just going up to his eyebrow line and down to his upper cheek. And I'm filling in there. So that's kind of, it's very Green Lantern-ish looking. See if we can do it with this guy too. You wanna, ooh, I got some green on his hair. You wanna um, be careful that you don't do too much, especially if you've got some great shading on uh, inside the eye line. You don't want it to look like a superhero mask on all these guys, but with some of them it's okay. Because you're going, we're going for the unified effect. So for some of them to have it, it's okay. And, oh, let's get get some on our charred, uh, well done zombie. How would you like a zombie? Yeah, medium well, please. See the glowing green light. It's gonna look really eerie on him. If I can find the right angle to paint him. All right, so there he looks. Okay, the last thing you want to do with your uh, with your glowing eye guys is give them a little bit, a little touch of uh, skull white right in the middle. So um, I'm gonna find my skull white and get to work, and then I'll show you the the finished result when I've got that done. Okay, we're now going to get started on the. Um, Oops, on the weathering of our corpse cart. So we're gonna need some hot turquoise. Just notice some scorpion green on one of these lengths of wood there. Let's fix that up. Okay, so uh, what was I saying? Hot turquoise, which we're going to water down and we're gonna be painting into all of the darker recesses. Um, but yeah, for the white, I just added some white to the can't really tell which is which is you know okay but uh, if you can if you can see I added a little bit of white to the centers of the pupils for the eyeballs for these guys not too much though okay so we're taking our hot turquoise the first thing we're gonna color is our bell and I'm just gonna remove it so I can show it to you and do it right up here under the camera lens and I'm going to paint our vertigris into the metal that's connecting or the, the line that you see. We're also going to paint it into these rusty recesses as well as up here. Oops. As long as you have lots of long, thin lines and you don't just glop all of it on, you can really just go to town and it uh, should look really good. Let's take a look at this side. I love a verdigris. Yes, I do. Yes, I do. And then just painting in these rest lines there. Ah, that is so gross. But it's perfect, okay. Clicks right back on, ding dong, ding dong. Next thing we're gonna take our verdigris and we are going to take our hawk turquoise, I mean, and we're going to find places where we can paint it, where the metal meets the metal. There, in between here. You don't have to do too much because we're going to do a lot of this next with our next uh, phase. So maybe looking at the wheels, a little bit on these spokes, maybe every other one just for some variety at the base of the spike, or not spokes but rivets, sorry. Might want to do some where these spines are. Not everyone, but some of them. You 
kind of want to just get a feel for how how random do you want the um, you know the verdigris to look. The next color we're going to be looking for to is Vermin Brown. It's not just for Skaven anymore, kids. It's also for some great rust effects. So besides our verdigris, we're also going to paint some really cool rust effects with this. So you want to water it down a lot in your in your paint palette and then you want to find areas that you can paint this rust effect on that uh, complement your your verdigris effect. So you just want to kind of stab it into into place. Now, a good place if you look at the uh, if you look online at the the corpse cart, um, you'll see that. Uh, it, they've got this this kind of brownish color around most of the most of the me metallics. So we're going to kind of recreate that right now. A little bit of a close up. And yeah, no one's really going to see the underside of here, but we're just going to do that for for us. It's for us. So you want to kind of complement the, the verdigris with your rust. To me, I think um, Vampire Counts is, is good for verdigris more, because the, the blue of the hawk turquoise kind of looks like it matches the gothic theme a little bit more than the um, than this brown rust color, but uh, both of them work. Both of them work really well. We're really just giving, oops, giving the eyes something more to look at. Faded, rusted metal is just awesome. Ages your machine, makes your guys look like they were in, they've been riding around on this thing for forever. Since the Red Duke was driven out of Bretonia. Alright, there is that. So now we're going to look at painting, painting up a little bit more of our um, ghostly liquid. We're going to be looking for some snot green now, which is the next step up from Dark Angel's Green. We're going to be painting a little bit of that onto our. Um, to our liquids. So you don't want too much, you want to just give the give the appearance of light reflecting off the liquid inside. And you want to get most of the color near the top. Since when the light hits the highest level of liquid goes down. That's why you'll notice deeper. Or, uh, just take a look at a beer bottle full of beer or soda, soda bottle, under the light. You'll notice that the light hits the, the glass, the, the liquid at the top. Nice, nice ambery light and um, the bottom of the, of the bottle is darker. You can't really see down there. So really going for just the, the top line of liquid. Thing we're going to do is we're going to add a little bit of our ghostly scorpion green to our glass, to our glasses. 
just mix that into the, the snot green and then keep building up from the bottom. breaking everything, all the rules that I just said because <laughs> I've got these bad mold lines so I'm just trying to mask them. That's alright. You know what? Yeah. Do as I say, not as I do. Lewis, we're almost done. You can hit the gloves tonight. Oh, I'm so happy for you. You and Igor are going, is that right? That's right, Warboss. We're gonna get some tail and not the Skaven kind. Do we have anything else that we have to do? I think that's about it. Uh, I highlighted Lewis a little bit with Den of Stone. So I just a, uh, a little bit to, so that he didn't look completely just like I pulled him off from getting shaded. Um, what else? That, that looks like it's it. Oh, we do have to paint a little bit of the rat's eyes. Now the rat's eyes, we're just going to paint white. Pure, regular, plain old white. want beady little white eyes looking at us. Oh my gosh, did anybody see the gray with Liam Neeson? I uh, saw the commercial and now I really want to see it. He's looking at those, at the wolves. He's got the torch and he's looking at the wolves and then um, they'll start, their eyeballs will start appearing. Oh, this angle. Okay, I'm gonna fix this up come back and we'll do a little wrap up. Oh, one more thing about the about the potions. I'm going to add some gloss varnish to them so it gives it a glassy glassy look to it. Um, but before I do that, I think I'm going to put some thraca green on so that the the colors tie together. So thraca green and then gloss varnish will finish up our bottles of potions and and stuff. See you soon! Alright, we are in the home stretch now. The last thing that I'm going to be doing is adding a little bit of highlights like we have to this guy here. Uh, just to his, his clothes, uh, the gray that we painted and shaded earlier. So I'm going to add some Codex Gray. I'm going to start with some Codex Gray and I'm going to make the rounds and see what looks like it could be highlighted. Also, during the break, I took some um, gloss varnish and I just varnished up all of the uh, gory, meaty bits, I guess you could call them. So, exposed intestines, exposed ligaments, um, anything that looks like it would have been fresh, freshly done. I also decided to gloss varnish inside all of these zombies mouths to make it look like they're uh, salivating and the it's mixed with the blood. I also mixed in some light purple into this guy's cadaver which looks pretty good I think. Uh, now with the codex gray what we're doing is we're just finding finding the highlights and bringing them out. Most of our work is all done, now it's just the finishing touches. So there, that's done for that. Let's hit now these trousers in between there. And uh, just find any exposed piece of gray clothing. We're really just highlighting the edges.
So, uh, if you'll notice, the, the GW website does not have like the green glowing eyes, and um, I think they mixed in a lot more red with their clothing. So, this is just my way of painting the corpse cart. You're welcome to follow uh, or take what you take what you like and do a combo of this and the Games Workshop style to each his own. Shading is great, I think it's one of my favorite things, but highlighting is uh, is what really pulls it all together, I think. Just take a look at these guys in the front. As you can see I uh, lost varnish this guy's guts. short diagonal strokes. Get this angle over here. Okay, that should be it. Lewis looks fine. He looks pretty ghostly well put together. So uh, I'm going to glue my third zombie part to the front and then we're going to wrap this guy up. Alright, and we are done. Yeah. I was trying to think if there was uh, anything else that we still needed to do. We definitely still need to put him on his base, but um, I think I'm going to wait for that for a little while because <laughs> I can't find it, son. I gotta look for it. So, um, what else did I do that I forgot to mention? Oh yeah, I did paint in here into the the Balefire Lantern. So now I can use both if I want to. Uh, what I did was after I painted um, in, you saw me paint in the Dark Angels Green, I painted in, uh, I went straight to Scorpion Green and then I painted a mixture of Scorpion Green and Skull White one-to-one -one, and then I just painted that in the center of each of these little uh, windows there. So that's how you get that effect. And um, you want to stick to the middle as much as possible. With the Dark Angels Green, it's okay. It's okay if you bleed over, but you don't want to bleed over too much with the the highlighting colors. I don't think. Um, and you know what? Looking at it from the front, let's take a take a long view. I think because the, the if you look at the crazy disproportionate um, way that he's Lewis is holding this uh, piece of bait over the other zombies to uh, goad them forward um, because it's coming out at this angle it kind of balances out symmetrically I think um, but that could just be me saying that I don't want to <laughs> I don't want to wait I didn't want to wait to get another bit <clears throat> the lantern bit um, so I had a great time with this model I loved um, painting every single bit of it uh, let's see if we can, yeah there we go uh, I think that the amount of detail that they packed onto these zombies is just so awesome, so much fun to paint this. And um, I know that you will too, any of you out there who have these corpse carts and haven't built them up yet. Um, what have you painted differently? Did you paint Lewis in the, um, the, the more grayish white kind of robes that uh, you see in the new, in the new Vampire Counts book? I, I didn't want to do that because I figured his skin is so pale. I don't get much sun! that um, it, the skin I thought would stand out better if we keep the skin pale and we gave him a dark uh, a dark robe. And also because I wanted to give him a dark robe so your eye is not drawn to him so much as the pile of corpses in front of him and all the creepiness going on there. So let me know what you think, let me know if you painted yours any, any differently, and um, let me know what you love about the model. I would love to hear from you Vampire Counts players, like what you, what you love and Mm, what you like if you did anything differently like what color did you paint these guys uh, the little the little vials and um, you know glass containers 
And uh, I'm so stoked. Louis, you got your pimp ride now. Are you happy? You can now hit the clubs. I love you, War Boss Tay. <laughs> You're the best friend a necromancer could ever have. Now get off my lawn. <laughs>